Welcome, amigos. Tonight is all victories. We promised some victory content. We're going to make some victory content. So if you're new here, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, whether it's on that side or this side. We've got lots of new stuff coming. Variety of motorcycles, Victory, Harley, Hondas, Yamaha. We just like motorcycles, adventures, parts, reviews. We got it all. So please hit that subscribe button if you want to support the channel. Tonight we're going to dive into five things we love and hate about our victories. And we're all going to talk about our three original victories here. There's uh, 201,000 miles I think we added up between these three, three bikes. Um, all done by us. Well, mostly by us. And... Uh, we're gonna dive into that list, so stay tuned. So I guess we're gonna talk about reliability. All right, so like Devin mentioned at the beginning, between these three bikes, we have 200, over 200,000 miles on these bikes. Um, as far as reliability goes, nothing major has gone um, on any one of these three besides your basic maintenance. Um, I have a, just under 40,000 miles on this one. This is a 2014 cross country that I bought brand new. Um, the only things that I've done to it besides oil and brakes was a belt. And that was only because I got a rock stuck in it. Um, I've gone through a few batteries, um, but that was my own personal fault. Um, this bike has been ultra reliable. Um, I've taken it, this one I've taken to Maine, um, which is about a thousand miles. Um, multiple times never had an issue um, done multiple overnights in Laconia never had an issue uh, started every single time unless I killed the battery like I said um, six batteries six batteries um, but like <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a big battery guy that's uh that's my weakness when it comes to anything with an engine um, but basically I really the belt and that was my own fault for well, not my own fault, but I got a rock in it and it ate up, chewed up the belt, so I had to replace that. But other than that, it's been completely bulletproof. Um, there was one time where I hadn't ridden it in almost two years because I had just bought the Street Glide and I actually had a flat tire on the Street Glide and we were leaving for Maine the next morning. So I had to go yank this out of the shed um, after having not ridden it for two years and I had to get it ready overnight before we left for the trip. And besides a battery, um, and a key number three. and yeah number three and a key module okay. because I had used I had put Victory's OEM alarm system in the bike which was never a good accessory um, I had more problems with that than anything um, but once I I swapped those two out the thing ran three days uh, completely bulletproof just just kept chugging along uh, gave me zero issues so um, absolutely love it but uh, these two guys can tell you a little bit more because. Their bikes have a lot more miles on them than mine does. I'm Taco Tony, and I ride. This is my 2011 Victory Vision. I'm When I went to go, before I bought this bike, I was looking at uh, a cross country in black, and that didn't end up working. I said, give me the ugliest bike in the dealership floor. And I found this, and it was a screaming deal. It had 30,000 30, miles on it when I got it. And all I've done to it, oh, actually, there's a list. But it's never left me stranded. It's been the most reliable thing I've ever owned. Did a couple minor things, like a stator at 70,000 miles, which is really good. That was the first problem, 70,000. Um, besides routine maintenance and wear parts, this thing has been purring like a kitten. It now has 90. 3,700 miles on it and um, it rattles but it's reliable so your turn Dev Devin here this is my 2014 cross country Bobby and I actually bought ours together at Shark Cycle when it existed the same day actually with another buddy three in one day so we did quite well when we bought these as leftovers uh, in 2014 uh, I just about to Roll 69,000 miles, giggity. Um, I've oh, had yeah. no, no issues either. I mean, a few little flukes, but uh, I mean, it's only ever been wear parts. I did have one winter where I started it in the spring and couldn't figure out why it wouldn't run right. And it turned out my Power Commander 5 had died. So you can't even blame that on Victory. And I had actually put that in used. So um, 
other than that, like I said, wear parts. <laughs> Funny story, there's, the only problems I've ever had with this bike is there was a period where this bike just did not get along with water. There was a few years where I feel like every trip we did was in the rain. Uh, and I happened to fry two of the stereo hand controls where it might be because I have music ADD, you know, changing the song every two seconds, but. It, you like opera. The yes. bike so liked opera. We were on a trip in Maine <laughs> and my hand control was acting up where it kept getting stuck and everything. Um, I have the XM radio on this bike, so I have all the stations. And I shit you not, the bike got stuck on satellite radio opera at full tilt volume. Of course, it started like right on the leg of the trip where I had to ride probably 90 minutes with opera blaring at full volume because there was no stopping. So when we pulled over, you know, pulled over to a stop at a gas station, everybody thought I was just being a clown, but I was actually just stuck with opera at full volume until <laughs> I pulled the fuse out of the side of the bike. But funny story, I guess. But like these guys said, <laughs> I trust this machine to go cross country. I take it again. I mean, I've been riding hardly a lot more because it's new. Hence the name cross country. This is still the trusted, you know, second bagger, I guess. Number two, we're going to talk about drivetrain, specifically the Freedom 106. Uh, great thing about these motors is they very easily make reliable, cheap, I should say affordable horsepower. I mean, these bikes, when you get it, you throw the timing wheel in from Lloyd's, you put that in yourself, and an exhaust, you're right around 100 horsepower without anything. You go stage two, right? Stage two cams. So I have Lloyd's, what, 501 cam in this bike. This bike, when I dynoed it, uh, 118 horsepower, 124 foot-pounds, which are very solid numbers for not a lot of money into parts. Um, you know, Vance and Hines exhaust beside that, so... The Freedom 106, a lot of the power is higher up, so it likes to rev a bit more. It's kind of different than a normal V-Twin, but it makes you happy every time you twist the throttle. I know Tony can attest to that. Yes, very much. This thing without a torque pack and my half-worn tire just slides around when you start off from a corner or just pull out somewhere. It's just fun. I have the same cams as Devin. Mine made a little bit less power. Probably the gutted exhaust. Yeah. It was uh, 117 and 120 horsepower to tire, but uh, they're just a blast to ride. They're fun. They're super reliable. Transmissions are very firm. They got a nice solid clunk when you drop them into gear and shift gears. Never really had a problem with that. Um, neutral is the easiest thing to grab on these transmissions. It's like a you can't miss neutral no matter what you do. They put something in there in uh, I think 2011 that made the transmission like an easy neutral and that's that's really nice when you're coming up to traffic um it does help that it's a direct drive too unlike harley which uses a yeah there's no chain, chain down here the victories are three gears that are direct drive to each other yep, so no chain tension it's noisy right. but it's got a very solid solid burn. and uh it's always the same the feel there's no variety sometimes yeah and uh talk about your freedom 106 so they called me james may and I elected to not put cams in this bike. It's actually the only one of the three victories or four victories that we have that doesn't have cams in it because you just don't need that much power, you know? It gets me point A to point B. But I was actually getting my bike dyno tuned um, with to make it, you know, run smoother, crisper, better fuel mapping. And they Lloyd told me that you cannot make 100 horsepower without the cams. And I proved him wrong. Uh, Number three. Gonna talk about the chassis and overall suspension of this bike. These bikes, probably, I could say we, we could say we've probably ridden, I don't know, 40 different motorcycles and demo rides. Definitely one of the best stock touring suspensions out of the box. You got an inverted front end, four and a half inches of travel in the rear. Not sure the travel specs on the front, but never even thought about changing suspension on this bike when it was the first thing I did on my Harley. So these bikes ride absolutely amazing. Uh, the only thing I changed was a little bit heavier fork weight oil in the front. Um, what's nice too is that these bikes are a little longer in the tank section. So not that I'm hugely tall, but even at six feet tall, there's more room to put your feet out, stretch out, there's huge floorboards. So we like the longer chassis of these bikes. It's nice to stretch out with the apes and stuff. Um, but the biggest thing is the suspension and the ride. These bikes 
suck up bumps like nothing else for as far as touring comfort. Uh, I know backpacking attests to that. She always says this bike rides better than my Harley, even with the $2,000 worth of suspension I put in my Harley. Um, the other thing that makes these bikes unique is their frames are made like a sport bike where there's not a traditional steel tube frame. They are a cast aluminum backbone and the motor connects the lower part. It's hung underneath that backbone. So which that then brings the entire powertrain two or three inches lower. So it gives these bikes a very low center of gravity. So they just handle amazing. They're narrow in the legs. So just all the ergonomics, suspension, chassis, uh, is just one of the best on these bikes. It's just, they just did that right. They really did. Graham? So the suspension on my Vision is a little bit different than Devon's, mostly in the, uh, or the cross countries, mostly in the front. Cross countries have inverted front ends. And if you look, this has a uh, non-inverted front end. Still rides fine. I think it still rides the same. I think those are just more sturdy, right? A little stiffer. Yeah, more predictable feel. But uh, I actually just rebuilt this front end completely. All new bushings, seals, everything. And it's just because of the high mileage. And it it is just like new. Um, so what I was saying before the camera person screwed up the gimbal was that <laughs> I think at around 70,000 we rode down to Key West on these all the way to the tip and back and about halfway home I noticed the rear end of the bike was really bottoming out and I think it broke the spring inside the uh, shock absorber so it now has a cross-country shock on it so I did lift up the rear a little bit and they're air adjustable and it just rides like brand new again. Just a little bit of routine maintenance and it rides better than my Harley did with the $2,000 suspension. And uh, it's just a great design. That uh, soft tail on a big bagger is is the way to go. The mono shock. No, mono shock, yeah. What did I say? So, well, it is a soft tail, but mono shock. Soft tail, mono shock without the traditional Harley two shocks. And uh, Rumors are that's what Harley's going to on their next generation touring frame. That's what we hope. I mean, I did get rid of my Harley, but I kept this bad girl. I love this bike. I'd never sell it. It's the bike that like got me hooked into doing long distances and just motorcycles in general. It just made the itch harder. Being comfy as a fat guy. All right, so next up is how unique they are. Um, this bike, a lot of people at first, like if you're riding, going down the road, they think it's a Harley, uh, it kind of gives off that street glide look, uh, especially for the cross country when you're, you know, when it's moving, when it's going by, especially if they don't know what it is. The soon as you stop though, people usually ask you, what the hell is that? Um, I'm sure other victory people can attest to that, but basically anytime you stop to get gas or at a store or anything like that, people come up to you and they're like, who makes this? What is this? And I've had the conversation countless times where people will walk up and just, they just want to chit chat for 20 minutes. And everyone usually says, is that a Polaris product? If they have any idea and you kind of have to explain it to them and either they know what it is and they want to talk smack. I'm sure everybody else who has a victory can attest to that too. If they're Harley guys, hell, I'm a Harley and a victory guy. So I'm confused, but basically you got to explain to them that it, it is a little bit different than a street glide it'll probably whoop their street glides ass in a race um, if they wanted to go for it but it's one of the things you have to deal with owning a victory it's something that we've all had to go through all through especially tony with the vision um, people have no idea what the hell that thing is space shuttle yeah as he tells people it's a space shuttle so um it's just one of the things that comes with it you gotta you gotta be ready for questions so Another thing, part of the uniqueness of these bikes is they have definitely a different sound to them. They got a very V8, or not, sorry, a very deep muscle sound. Uh, you know, the Victories like to pop. They got a lot of back talk. Um, all of ours have a different sound. Bobby's running gutted, gutted straight pipes. Graham's doing the same. I have uh, the Vance and Hines. I don't know what they're called. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. The Vance and Hines on this, very deep sound. I mean, you feel it in your chest when you ride this bike. I've had Millers, but 
they just got a great sound to them that's unique. And from inside my house, I always know when someone's rolling up on a victory. So it's kind of a cool part about them. Yeah. So number five is probably ease of maintenance on these bad girls. Um, I've done a belt on a couple different bikes, one on a couple different Harleys. That's a pain in the ass. Like I said before, I've changed the belt on this thing. It is 10,000 times easier to do a belt on one of these than it is a Harley. So on the Harley, it's behind the primary. So you have to take apart, you have to one, take apart your primary completely. You lose all the fluid you have to change it or save it um, and put it back in. But on these, the belt is actually on the opposite side compared to a Harley. And the, it's not behind anything. So basically you take your bag off, you take your side panel off, you take your pipe off and it's right there. Um, you do have to slide the wheel out, obviously, to get the belt off the back of the wheel, but it's so simple. It's half the time of what it takes to do on a Harley. I know Graham has done a little bit as yeah, far as maintenance. Did a couple little things. When, when Victory went out of business, I had an opportunity to buy a brand new crate motor from Lloyd's from Polaris, one of the last ones on the shelf, and it came with cams in it. And the bike had 70k on it and i had the motor sitting around i'm like i'm just gonna save this for someday maybe when my other one goes i'll just have a brand new fresh engine for it that lasted about six seven months and got bored one winter and we ended up putting the motor in it with the cams in it instead of putting cams in the old motor because my brain just doesn't work very well <laughs> but uh it was pretty cool taking this apart we had to like break the bike into two pieces and uh, we didn't film anything of it because it was before we had the channel, but Bobby will drop a picture somewhere here of us taking them apart in the garage and had the bike broken half with an engine hoist hanging from the ceiling. It was, it was a good project. It wasn't very hard. It was pretty easy, actually. But, uh, yeah, I still have a good spare motor. It runs fine. I just went through a lot of work to put cams in, and I should have just put cams in the old motor. But uh, Devin's going to talk a little bit about maintenance. So you use a maintenance to stuff that you do all the time. Your oil every 5K, like anything else, far easier than a Harley oil change. You know, Harley has three fluids, and they put the oil filter up in front of the cylinder in the dumbest spot ever. Victory makes your life easy. It is five quarts, all one oil, shares the oil with the clutch, primary, engine, everything. And so they make that easy for you. I've ne have you has anybody here actually ever checked their oil besides adding oil change? Because I have never. I've never checked my oil in ninety three thousand miles. Not that I neglect maintenance. It's just I know when I put five quarts in, pretty much five quarts is coming out, and I don't worry about it. <laughs> so, again, the oil change is very easy. The drain plug is right here, the back of the primary. It's under the center, little Allen bolt. One drain plug, and your filter is right back there under your exhaust. They're next to each other. The pan will cover both of them when you put it under there. It is literally a four minute oil change. It takes longer to dump the quartz in than anything else. So they make it really easy to just do your oil changes. Yeah, and the transmission, everything. Everything, ease of maintenance just makes it, they don't break, but when you gotta take care of them, it's it's very easy, so. Um, that covers the top five things we love about our victories. So, I mean, we could go on forever. We got a lot of stories on these bikes. They've been, I think all three of them have been to the tip of the, the main. Some of us in Canada, uh, these two have been to Key West. So and Maine in the same year. In the same year. I mean, we've been everywhere, freaking 103 degrees, rain. I think I've even seen a little snow on this bike. And like Graham said earlier, we became addicted to riding on these bikes. Like when Bobby and I bought ours, we're like, ah, cool baggers. I got radios and stuff, you know, somewhere to put our crap. But we really became riders on these bikes, and that's why we're so hooked on them and just sentimental value. Uh, I don't think this bike will ever go anywhere. My wife won't let me sell it either. Um, so that was the top five things we love about our victories. We're actually going to make you wait, and we are going to talk about five things we hate on victories. Hate's a strong word. I don't think I really hate anything about this bike, but... Dislike. Dislike. So... And uh, that'll be coming out after this video. Tell us what you love about victories if you own one. Yes. In the sure, comments below. Make sure leave a and comment And make sure below. if you're not subscribed, you do catch the hate video that's coming out or dislike video that's coming out soon by subscribing and hitting the bell. You know, all the stuff that everyone on YouTube tells you to do, we'll do it too. Thanks for watching.